Hello everyone and welcome back to Benjamin's Tech Club. Yes, it's been quite a while since we uh, uploaded a video, but we are back and we look to uh, be making a lot, uh, quite a few more videos in the near future. So um, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, uh, click the notification bell so you uh, never miss out on future content, and uh, make sure to leave a like on the video if you are so inclined. So today, if you didn't already read the title, we're going to be learning how to install College of Revamped on PC. So there's going to be two things you need here. One is the all-needed files here you, um, from MuckEaser, which I will put a link to his website and his YouTube channel in the description. So big thanks to MuckEaser for making that. And then, of course, you're going to need a ROM dump of your own co uh, copy of NCAA Football 14 for the PS3. This is mine right here. Uh, don't go pirating copies because, you know, that's illegal. You can do that. Um, so I recommend definitely using your own uh, your own copy too, and definitely uh, some of the ROM downloads online can uh, usually don't work and can cause issues with this. So I definitely recommend using a legitimate version that you've dumped. But uh, basically, once you just have these two um, you know files right here, extract both of them. Once it's done, like I already done, you have them right here, so we can get started. First thing you're gonna do is open up the all need to file for PS3 icons. You can also have the Xbox icons one, depending on the controller you use. We'll worry about that in a bit. Once you've gone in here, you see we have four files. RP, RP CS3 zip, PS3 updat.pup, which is PS3 firmware, CFB RPC disk easy installer version 19, and that is the uh, comfortable revamped um, uh, mod slash update, and then uh, NCAA football 14 file. And you're gonna see that if we compare the two, the one that's in here in my file, that's missing missing something, the PS3 dash underscore disk dot uh, SFB, and that is what uh, you're gonna need. So you could just use the full game dump if you already have it of your own, or you can just copy that file over, which is what I'll do, but we'll do that in a minute. You know, it's illegal to pirate the game, so we can't, so you know, that can't be put in the folder, obviously. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and just extract the RPCS3 folder. It's gonna go right here, go right down to RPCS3, double click it, and it will open. Now it says, uh, yeah, we do not can do piracy, all this stuff. So click on I have read the quick start guide and continue. You can also click on do not show again if you don't wanna see that again. Click on continue. And now it's gonna say a new version of RPCS3 is available. Do not update, click on no, and I'll explain why in a minute. The first thing we're gonna do here is go to this folder and ps 3 updatepup we're just gonna drag that there, click on yes, and then click on yes. Let's say installing firmware version 4.87, please wait, and then click on okay. And now it's gonna compile some PPU modules and that is going to take a little bit. But in the meantime, we can just go ahead here and we're going to open up the NCAA Football 14 game folder. And now we're gonna open up our ROM dump as well, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy the ps3 underscore disk sfb file from there into here, and now I can go ahead and close that out. From here, we're going to copy. You can move it if you want to, but we're going to copy just in case you know something happens wrong. It's way easier to go back and uh, fix it instead of having to ext you know extract stuff again or whatever. We're going to copy this folder now that we have the ps3 uh, disk sfb file in it. You go to RPCS3, you see it's just made all these new folders all of a sudden after you load it up for the first time. And we're going to find the folder dev underscore HDD0. Double click that and then go to disk. And you see this is empty. We're just going to paste that game into here. And then once that is done, Right there, you see here, it's right in there. We can go ahead and we can close this out. And also too, while it's open, I recommend you go ahead and you can, uh, you know, pin RPCS3 to the taskbar just here you now for ease of access. We can also go ahead and we'll make a, drag this to the, okay, we can't. Um, I wasn't sure if it would let us do that or not. Go ahead here, right to RPCS3. We click on, we right click it, 
and also like you know sent to death. Yeah, send to desktop. Create shortcut. Close out of here. And then you see this is still loading those modules. Now our PCSP shortcut will just go ahead and those properties go ahead here and rename this. Sketch shortcut out of there, RPCS3, and there we go. So now this is going to finish compiling these modules. Now you got on, pinned on the taskbar and on the desktop, so you don't have to go, you know, searching through the folder every time you want to open the program. I'm just going to give this a minute to finish up, and I will be back when these PPU modules have been compiled. All right, so as you can see, this has gone away. It's finished compiling all the modules here. So what we're going to do is just close out of here. And we can open RPCS3 right back up. And it says a new version of RPCS3 is available. Do you want to update? Click on no. And um, the reason for that is being that you see here, uh, compatibility is playable. Only, uh, I've had some trouble anyway with the newest PS uh, RPCS3 update where that is uh, in orange and it says in game and it, the game does not load correctly and the mod does not install and it causes all kinds of problems. Once you've gotten here, congratulations. You've uh, Got the base game installed, so if this is as far as you want to go, and you just want to play base NCAA Football 14. Hey, that's totally cool. That's a great uh, way to play too. And um, that's would be basically it for this uh, tutorial, mainly for you. I mean, you can skip over what well, you'll see in a few minutes for when you do the configuration. But assuming that you're watching this because you want to play college football revamped, on to the next step. All we're going to do is simply go ahead here to our all needed files. And then we're going to go ahead and just drag this uh, College Football Revamp Easy Installer into there. It says you want to install this package, click on yes. And now we'll install the package. So this is version 19 and version 20 is the latest one out at the time of making this video. Uh, if you want to install the latest update, that should work fine. Just go download that from their website. Um, I'm just using V19 because it's, e it's uh, easier to do for this tutorial. and uh, it's already in here, so it just makes everything faster. And you'll also notice too, this is version 1.00, update available 1.02. We can't download that update, but College Football Revamp will install that for us automatically. So that will all be good, and you'll see that change in just a second here. So I will step aside and be back when it is complete. So you can see here, back, and this is at 99%. And now 100% it is done. You see it successfully installed software from packages. Click OK. And you'll know it worked if the icon changed from NCAA Football 14 to College Football Revamped logo, as you see right here. And the version changed from 1.00 to 1.02. So once you've done that, we're not going to run the game just yet, but we're, we're getting close right there. We'll close that out. We don't need that anymore. We'll kind of do, but we don't need it open. And all you need is this open. What we're going to do, we're going to go and right click and click on create custom configuration. We're not going to ch change anything in the CPU settings. I mean, you can, but the way I like it, I think it runs best is uh, by doing mainly in the GPU settings here. With the Vulkan renderer and your uh, graphics device, so mine's just in integrated graphics on this computer. But if you have a uh, graphics card, may, uh, so definitely make sure to have that selected. You can leave all this the same. I have the default resolution to 1920 by 1080 and set this to at least 150 right there. Just change async to legacy, single threaded, and then put check next to white color buffers. Then go over to audio, your audio out, and you can just keep there, convert to 16 bit, and, um, and you can mess with the any all the settings too, but this is what I recommend. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and you can apply and before we actually save it though um audio may not work good i mean in emulators audio tends to not come out come through too well so if that is the case you can just simply you know disable audio output like that or you can just you know mute your speakers on your computer once you have that set like you uh, here like you like it just click apply save custom configuration you see here you see little black bars right here next to the name and 
now that, the, now that they are there, uh, you know that there's a custom configuration there. You can also make a custom gamepad configuration. So basically, um, you no, know, you can change like if you're using say a, a PS4 controller on here, you'd make this DualShock 4. Select the uh, the DualShock 4 controller and you plug it in, it will show up in this list, and then it will it should automatically map the buttons. And if not, you can change that uh, manually to how you like it. Same with the I guess, Xbox controller or whatever. And that's why you download either the Xbox or PlayStation buttons, depending on what controller you plan on using. I'm just going to say with the keyboard input for now, I have no controller plugged in because, you know, tutorial purposes are not, you know, really playing anything. You just got to save that. So, and it also has a custom uh, gamepad configuration too, which you can change. You can also make a, config a general configuration and general gamepad configuration and stuff right from the bar up here. But now that that is done and out of the way, and go ahead and launch the game by right clicking it. Make sure this is important to do it this way. Right click it and click on boot with custom configuration. And you also see the little controller icon shows up here. There next to the black bar saying that you have a custom gamepad configuration as well. And you see it's loading modules and the initial boot's gonna take a while to compile everything. Um, and then after that, it, will, it should boot up pretty quickly. Uh, but once it gets past the screen, you'll see it get uh, into the game. and yeah, you'll be ready to play now. Just to run through real quick, we'll close uh close this window out. And yes, we want to exit the game. Um, basically, if you're you know booting up the computer and you wanted to go in and play some controller revamped, what you do here it says it's not responding. It's fine, just cancel it. Um, you now you come in here, you have to click one on your shortcuts. I have that you know, on the taskbar and on the uh, desktop. You can put the start menu to wherever. It's easier than having to go in here and you know, go through the folder to get to it, but you can do whatever you want. Basically, you go ahead, you open up the program, and then it will say a new version of RPS CS3 is available. I do not recommend updating it. Click on no, because that will probably break your game installation. You see, um, what we're going to do once we have it open here, just right click, click on boot with custom configuration. And that's all you have to do to get your game started. It will take a second here. You also have a log down here, which is kind of helpful. And if something goes wrong, it will most likely tell you what the problem is. If the game freezes or crashes or something like that. But yeah, that is basically it for this video. And then, of course, too, if you double click, you can make it full screen. Double click out of here. And then you can also go ahead and we'll just close this game again. Yeah, so that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's meant to be just a quick tutorial on how to install College Full Revamp on PC. Hope that it's worked out for you, and we uh, hope you have a lot of fun playing it. Thanks to everyone at College Full Revamp for making a fantastic mod. Thanks to MuckGeezer for making the College Full Revamp files there. Uh, we'll leave a link to his channel and his, uh, his website to download those files in the description, as well as the College Full Revamp website to download the latest College Full Revamp uh, updates and to uh, see change logs and stuff like that as well as a link to the Discord for help and support and the community chat and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll hope to see you soon. Ben from Tech, Benjamin's Tech Web signing off. Adios.